If you're doing the band walks or the clam exercise and you feel that front side of your hip working, stop, adjust, and make sure to focus on what you actually want to work, which is your glute medius. Hey guys, it's Corey from Redefining Strength. And today I wanna to talk about the surprising cause of low back, hip, and knee pain. So I know the psoas gets a lot of attention for causing lower back, hip, and knee pain, but it isn't the only hip flexor muscle that can cause us issues. The TFL, or tensor fascia lata, is one of the main culprits of lower back, hip, and knee pain. It can even lead to feet and ankle issues. So today I wanna to go over not only how you can correct TFL tightness and compensation, but even why some of the moves you might be doing to correct this issue may not be paying off the way they should. So what joint actions does the TFL control? It not only flexes our hip, but leads to internal hip rotation. It's also involved in hip abduction, and it can even create tibial external rotation, which means it can impact not only our knee, but also our ankle and feet. Because of the far-reaching impacts of this muscle through the IT band, it can lead to not only hip pain, but also knee and ankle issues. And if you've ever thought, hey, I have IT band pain and it's not really getting better, it might be because you're not addressing TFL tightness. So how can you address a tight TFL that might be compensating during movements? You need to strengthen your glute medius. And how do you strengthen your glute medius? You need to do abduction or lateral raise movements. However, a lot of these moves that you're going to be doing to strengthen your glute medius also involve your TFL. But because our TFL is also involved in hip abduction, a lot of the moves we need to do to strengthen our glute medius also work our TFL. So if you've ever done monster band walks and wondered why the front of your hips burn more than your glutes, it might be your TFL compensating. So while you're trying to strengthen your glute medius to actually prevent lower back hip and knee pain, you might be continuing to overwork your TFL. So I wanna share with you some tweaks you can do to movements to make sure you're actually working your glute medius the way you should. We have to remember it's not just doing the right moves, but actually getting the right muscles working during those exercises if we wanna correct the issue. Because if we're letting muscles compensate during movements, we're just perpetuating the pain we might have. So if you've been paying a lot of attention to your knee or your hip directly, or even your IT band specifically for IT band issues, start taking a time to actually focus on your TFL and start to get your glute medius working. So as I mentioned, how do you strengthen your glute medius? It's through lateral raise or abduction movements. Now I wanna share some tips to help you dial in these movements to make sure that your TFL isn't taking over and you're actually working your glute medius as you should. The first little tip I wanna give you is that if you actually put your pointer finger on your hip and your thumb back on your butt, you can feel where your glute medius should be working. So if you don't feel under your thumb working, you might need to adapt the movement. If you're doing the band walks or the clam exercise and you feel that front side of your hip working, Stop, adjust, and make sure to focus on what you actually want to work, which is your glute medius, because that means that your TFL is compensating. We have to be intentional with the moves we do. We can't just push through and just sort of let other things take over. We won't reap the full benefits, even if we're doing supposedly the right moves. So I wanna share the three tips, and we're gonna start with number one. Tip number one, treat the TFL as if it's a toddler. You need to keep it distracted. So what does this mean? Basically, you're trying to keep the muscle engaged in something else, so the TFL engaged with, say, internal rotation, as you do the lateral raise so you can help yourself focus on the glute medius and what should be working. Because the TFL creates external rotation at the tibia, by internally rotating it, you're actually shutting it off. You're also then internally rotating your hip, which keeps the TFL busy, because the TFL performs hip internal rotation. So if you're keeping the TFL busy by doing this joint action, then when you go to do your abduction or lateral raise movement, you're better able to engage your glute medius. So if you struggle with lateral raise movements and you notice you're constantly turning your toe open towards the ceiling, try this internal rotation. It can really help you activate your glute medius better. And again, you can use your pointer finger on your hip and your thumb back on your butt to make sure the right area is working. If you're still finding you're really struggling at getting that glute medius or that side butt engaged, you might even wanna perform a slight kick back. So as you might know, the TFL is a hip flexor, which means it flexes your hip. So if you actually put your hip into extension and you kick back a little bit, you can engage your glute max a little bit more. That can help you really turn off that TFL to better engage your glute medius as well. So you can do this by slightly kicking back as you raise your leg. You can also place like a slider against the wall and then kick back into that as you do the lateral raise movement. This not only helps you engage the glute max, but again, will put your hip into extension to help shut off that TFL. It's all about shutting off that mind-body communication to the TFL by inhibiting the muscle in any way we can so we can better establish that mind-body connection to our glute medius. Tip number two is to change the amount of hip flexion you're actually performing the movement in. 
So there's not just one posture you can do to perform lateral raises or abduction movements. You can do them seated, you can do them lying down, you can do them standing, and all of these change the amount of hip flexion you're actually performing the exercise in. So if you find you really struggle with, say, the basic clamshell, you can even change the amount that you're bending or extending your hips to help you better engage the glute medius. You can also use that first tip and that internal rotation of the foot to help you better engage the glutes instead of letting the TFL take over. While that lying clamshell might seem like a basic move to do, often we allow our TFL or even our piriformis to take over for our glute medius. So if you're really trying to focus on the glute medius, try changing the exact degree of hip flexion that you're lying in. You might even do a straight side lying movement instead of having your hips flexed at all. But by changing the amount of hip flexion, you can help yourself better establish that mind-body connection because each of our biomechanics are slightly different. And again, using that hip extension to your advantage can help shut off the hip flexor muscle. A great way to test out what amount of hip flexion really works for you is actually the three-way seated abduction. You can sit on the bench with a mini band right below your knees. You can lean back from this posture, sit up nice and straight, or even lean forward. You can change the amount of hip flexion you're sitting in by changing your torso angle. This can allow you to see how much hip flexion really works for you and where you're best able to engage the glute medius. You then want to start with that posture. While of course we want to strengthen our glute medius from all degrees of hip flexion, we want to start with the move that allows us to best establish our mind-body connection first. Because once we feel the muscle actually working, it's a lot easier to then involve it in other movements. So if you really struggle with one of the postures and say having your hips really flexed, you might want to start in a more extended state, even leaning back. Once you've established that mind-body connection, you can then move on to other postures. But because your glutes are already engaged and working and you're already conscious of the muscle and feeling it, it'll be easier to engage it with the other postures. We wanna make sure that we first establish that mind-body connection before moving into other movements or postures because that way we can make sure we're using the correct muscle during those other movements and exercises. And that way we'll get more out of the exercises and prevent TFL compensation. Tip number three is to inhibit that TFL before you go into activation movements. You can inhibit the TFL by using foam rolling and stretching to your advantage. The use of foam rolling and stretching is kind of up for debate, but that's partly because the effects of it are short-lived. However, you can use these short-lived effects to your advantage. If you inhibit the TFL by foam rolling and stretching right before you do these other movements, you're able to better establish that mind-body connection to that underactive muscle. Because if the TFL is overactive, that's the first muscle your brain wants to call on to perform the movement. So if you have that mind-body connection established, when you go to do your automatic recruitment pattern, you're going to continue to overuse that muscle. So if you can inhibit that mind-body connection between the TFL and your brain before you then go into the glute medius activation exercises, you might have an easier time at actually using your glute medius the way you should. So a little TFL foam rolling before your activation moves, or even a nice TFL stretch can help you inhibit that muscle to then better activate your glute medius. Even though the effects might be short-lived, if you do it right prior and shut off that muscle, it can be easier to establish the mind-body connection. It's all about changing those natural recruitment patterns, and by inhibiting the TFL through the foam rolling and stretching, we can make sure we're actually activating our glute medius like we want to, instead of compensating and continuing to overuse the TFL. A bonus tip I'd like to add in there, because often we only have issues on one side, is that if you have an imbalance, you need to do imbalance prehab or rehab. You can't just work both sides the same if you have an issue on one side. You need to really understand what's causing that issue. And it could be glute medius weakness on that same side if your TFL is compensating, but it could also be issues with your other side. A lot of times we ignore our left side if our right side has pain, but what might be happening is that our left side might actually be underactive and weak, and therefore we're overusing any muscles we can on our right side to compensate. So you really need to get assessed or even assess whether or not the side with pain is because one of the muscles on that side isn't working as it should, your TFL is compensating for a weak glute medius, or even if the other side isn't activating the way it should, so therefore you're overworking that other side. So if you have an imbalance and you don't have pain on both sides, you need to do imbalance rehab. That might mean doing foam rolling only on one side to relax those overactive muscles while strengthening only one side. But you need to address each side independently to really correct any imbalances you have. That's also where unilateral moves come into play. If you're only using bilateral movements in your routine, instead of including unilateral movements, you might be perpetuating the compensation because your stronger side might be taking over. You want to make sure that you're actually addressing each side independently so that that weaker side isn't even compensating to try and keep up too. By using the unilateral movements, you're working each side independently, which can also help you really focus on what you feel working to better establish that mind-body connection. So just remember, if you have an imbalance, you might have to do imbalance rehab. Make sure to use these three tips to get more out of those moves that you might be doing to help strengthen your glute medius. Because remember, it's not just about doing the right moves, but about actually feeling the correct muscles working. 
If you need a quick series to help you address low back, hip, and knee pain, especially due to TFL compensation and tightness, check the video description for a link to a workout. If you liked the video, make sure to like it, comment below if you have any questions, and subscribe, we're posting new videos each week.